Slavoj Žižek is a renowned philosopher and cultural critic who has been dubbed the most dangerous philosopher in the West by both the New Republic and Europe's largest magazine, Der Spiegel. Uh, Žižek has published more than 50 books translated into over 20 languages and is the subject of multiple documentaries exploring cultural theology and political theory. He currently serves as the international director of the Burbeck Institute for the Humanities at the University of London and senior researcher at the Institute for Sociology and Philosophy at the University of Ljubljana, correct? How do I say that yeah. right? Tolerable, so, yes. Yeah. How would you say it? Ljubljana. Yeah, see, you say But it. nobody pronounces it correctly. No, so. you do. <laughs> <laughs> In his home country of Slovenia, yeah. I got that right. Absolutely. Professor G, yeah, good to have you on the program. Thanks, I'm grateful to you I, I'm honored. So, I'm honored to have you here, believe me. Um, honored that you're here in the States and, and given us a full show to talk to you. So I want to just pick your brain on a number of things if, if I can. I think I want to start with what is obviously the, the leading news story in our country right now, this, this prevalence um, of gun violence. Uh, and because your perspective is different, living in a different part of the world, I, I wonder what there is for us, the U.S., to learn from the world about the psychosis, the psychology of why we are so addicted to guns. I don't know enough specifically about American mm -hmm. culture to give you a good answer, but I would nonetheless tell you, don't blame yourself too much. Maybe, just maybe, that's my modest, optimist view, mm -hmm. maybe these explosions of violence with guns and so on that you get from time to time are uh, a collateral damage of some attitude towards freedom and so on, which is in itself not so bad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that every civilization, if you look at it closely, has its dark side. And this is what, in most of my book, I'm trying to elaborate. Mm -hmm. In what sense, what appears to you as an unnecessary prohibited transgression and so on, is really part of a culture. Like, that's why my big experience, almost epiphany, was serving the military. Mm -hmm. I'm a very disciplined man. I like order, things work. And the big shock for me was the chaos, at least in the Yugoslav army. Mm -hmm. All the nasty rituals, unwritten rules that you have to obey, and so on and so on. So this may sound strange for someone like me who still mm -hmm. considers himself some kind of a Marxist, no? Mm -hmm. But I always had a great admiration for United States. I think what is at the bottom of all this is a key part of, let me use this bombastic term, American ideology, mm -hmm. a certain idea of personal freedom as the foundation of it. As a more old-fashioned European, I think that you Americans sometimes tend to forget that. Yes, personal freedoms are a wonderful thing. I do whatever I want, I walk wherever I want, I travel wherever I want, but in order for this to function. Are we aware uh, what extremely complicated level of laws, custom, manners has to be here in order to enable this? Mm -hmm. I found two wonderful symptoms of where maybe you got it wrong. Uh, maybe they are, I'm crazy to mention them, but I think they tell something. Mm -hmm. When I enter an American hotel or any building, for you, First floor is for what for us Europeans is a ground floor. Mm -hmm. For us, you climb to the first floor mm -hmm. already. Maybe this is what's wrong with you. You don't see that in order to count one, two, you need a ground. Mm -hmm. Ground would be precisely the network of, of social manners and so on. Another point that amuses me. I think you are too atheist a nation. What do I mean by mm -hmm. this? I noticed how in many hotels here, if they have more than 15, 16 floors, you cheat, not you, but hotel managers, whatever. 13th take, floor doesn't 13. exist. Right, right. 12 and then <laughs> 14. 13 is yeah. 14. Right, yeah. But don't you believe in God? Whom are you cheating? Yeah. God knows that 14 <laughs> is really 13. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? What mm -hmm. in Europe, in an old-fashioned way, we call a, a common ethical substance, the field of values, manners, and so on. Mm -hmm. Maybe you underestimate a little bit the weight of this. Maybe you accentuate in a wrong way the 
radical, untouchable character of personal freedom. Now, again, individual freedom. Now, again, I have nothing against it. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is only that in it brought to the end, this attitude is self-destructive. Because too much individual freedom destroys, not social link, but destroys human freedom itself. Okay. Well, hey, let me, I, I hear your point and I take that. And I'm glad you offered that to expression. But, but when but. you say something like this, I see your there's a but, knife. There's a butt coming. Your, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a big yeah. butt coming. Yeah. If, if you're right about the fact that the collateral damage of personal freedom might be these incidences mm -hmm. of gun violence that happen too often. So it's collateral damage of personal freedom. Mm -hmm. I take that. Why does that happen just in this country? This isn't the only country in the world where people have individual freedom. That's what and, and I tried to freedom. answer with the second part. Okay, G give me, tell me that again. Yeah, that uh, uh, your per accent on personal freedom right. does not take enough into account society. Mm -hmm. How f society in the sense of the thick network of social rules, customs. Mm -hmm. Now I come to more refined points. And this will bring us strangely even to what I see as the failure of political correctness. Okay. <laughs> Not just the explicit spoken, explicitly formulated rules, mm -hmm. but especially those implicit rules, you know. What's so beautiful for me, for social manners, and I'm here very conservative, mm -hmm. I like manners, is that manners do not simply prescribe what should you should do, say, or not do, say. But what you should, you are allowed to say, but it's not polite mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. Or the other way around, what you are prohibited to do, but you are expected nonetheless to do it. For example, the first paradox is wonderful for me. Let's say, let's say you invite me to lunch. I suppose, I hope it's true, maybe not, you have more money than me. Don't, don't you have also in this country a certain implicit rule mm -hmm. when the bill arrives, you will... If I, invi it, if I invited you, yeah, I but, should pay. Yeah, yeah but yeah. don't you have this manner that for a little bit I'm expected to insist, no, no, I should pay. <laughs> with oh, no, I'll pay you. Oh, please yeah, let me. Yeah, But I, 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 it's I, part of the right, game. Right, and right. I claim this is not simply hypocrisy. Right. It's, in a sense, it's hypocritical. Right. We both know you will pay. Right. And I would love you for doing something horrible, mm -hmm. for telling me at the beginning, no, okay, if you want, you pay. No, mm -hmm. then I will have to go through all the game. Oh my God, sorry, I forgot my money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that you see, this is for me, I'm simplifying the line sure. of argumentation. What doesn't work with so-called political correctness? It tries to render explicit the rules too much, like mm -hmm. let's regulate everything. Mm -hmm. If you do this, it's already sexism, if you do that. But it doesn't function like that. Rules in real life also always functions in this conditional way, to know a society. Mm -hmm. It's not only to know the rules, but to know how to violate the rules. Mm -hmm. And there, manners enter. Mm -hmm. And here, again, I have problems with political correctness. For example, uh -huh. consider, now I will provoke you to the end. Okay. Considering political correctness and racism. Of course, my God, I found racism something not only uh, incorrect, but simply stupid, obscene. Mm -hmm. Racists are weak people who don't trust themselves, basically. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, nonetheless, would you admit or not, coming from relatively different culture, mm -hmm. I'm sincerely, it's not just a rhetorical trick, interested in your opinion. Mm -hmm. Isn't something which, from a strict standpoint of political correctness, cannot but appear a racism or racial slur insult, mm -hmm. also an absolute, for me at least, in most of the cases, mm -hmm. absolute condition of establishing a real opening, a real warm contact with another human being. By, by this I mean the following. Whenever I visit a country, first we play these official rules. Oh, how interesting are your rituals, your food, all that bull, you mm -hmm. know. But then, you know, I tell a dirty joke, they tell a dirty joke, we are in. Mm -hmm. And I remember a fond memory of my country which disappeared in civil war, ex-country Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. Before racial tensions exploded, when I was young, 60s, 70s, racism, but I call it paradoxically, 
progressive racism mm. was all pervasive. Mm -hmm. Each nation was identified with a certain racial cliche. We mm -hmm. Slovenes were misers, Montenegro people were lazy, and so on. And when I talk with my friends, it wasn't telling racist jokes so much against the other. It was, we were competing in a friendly way who will tell a nastier joke mm -hmm. about oneself, about myself. Mm -hmm. And we didn't experience this racial cliches as insulting, but as something we, in a wonderful comical spirit to be assumed. And I can guarantee you it works wonderfully. A negative proof. The moment in early 80s in ex-Yugoslavia, in ex uh, real racism, which ended up in the terrible mm -hmm. civil war of the 90s, real racism started to explode, these jokes disappeared. Absolutely, because their place was precisely to establish a real warm human contact. And that's my fear of political correctness behind all this respect of the other mm -hmm. and so on. Isn't beneath it a certain terrifying coldness? The, what I experience as the real message of this political correctness, its rules, especially when they are connected with this fear of harassment. And I experienced this mm -hmm. with my, okay, slightly obscene nature, you know. I look a woman into the eye one second too long. Oh, visual rape. I tell a dirty joke. Oh, verbal rape and so mm -hmm. on and so on. And then I noticed what their harassment is really a form of maybe not hatred, but fear of the proximity of the other. The fear of harassment basically means don't come too clear to me. I cannot tolerate that your proximity. It's like many of my white liberals. They love blacks. Oh, we did them horrible damage. We should give mm -hmm. them billions of dollars. But here I have a but. But their but is I immediately notice they really have no black f friends, mm -hmm. except some maybe mm -hmm. academics and so mm -hmm. on. And what disturbs them is you know, the classical scene, many times it happens in Spike Lee movies. Yeah. Black people, something bothers you. Yeah. Too noisy, their music, vulgar joke, uh, food doesn't smell well, and so on and so on. That's for me the yeah. horror of political correctness. I want to, I want to, you've said so many things, I didn't want to interrupt you, but you said so many things I want to go back to. You but should as, interrupt as, no, me, no, no, otherwise you are finished. As you. quickly as I can. Yeah. Number one, I agree with you about so many, not all, but so many but of these. go to bat again. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you with about your point relative to so many of these white liberals. I make the point all the time that there's a distinct difference between charity and justice. Absolutely. And so they, and many of them miss that. Not just empirically, they can be, they can be kind, they can, they can be kind to black Sorry, people. Can I interrupt you, but, but in a good sense, in Europe, that's thing. the problem with refugees yeah. now. We are moralizing it. We are changing this into problem of charity. Right. So that we like how good we are. We but are not justice, though. No, it should be a matter of justice. Exactly. That's why to provoke some journalists who ask me, do you feel charity, empathy? Would you like to receive some refugees in your apartment? I say, no, I hate them. But it's not a matter of me liking them. It's justice. I have to do it. Yeah. I'm ready to lower my standard to 50%. For justice. That's crucial for, for justice. justice. The, other, the other thing I want to go back to is I, I hear your point about political correctness, and I have a problem with it myself. <laughs> and yet I think there's a distinct difference between political correctness and the visual or verbal rape that you talked about um, that says something about the humanity and the dignity of the person uttering those statements. What, is, what does it say about your humanity, your dignity, when you process a conversation in a certain way and those jokes, those crude remarks come out of you? It says something about your humanity and your dignity, does it not? I, I see your point, yeah. but I was just say, and believe me, I have many English friends mm -hmm. and I've learned this game from them. I don't think you can map the opposition between dignity and brutal imposi Im vulgar imposition directly onto the couple of politeness and mm -hmm. this slightly vulgar outspokenness. Believe me, English people, maybe not all of them, mm -hmm. I have many good friends there, are masters of being polite and being all the more humiliating, aggressive in the very form of politeness. Mm -hmm. That's crucial for me. My point is not now we should all use, use sleazy words mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, there are persons with whom 
the only thing that works is uh, politeness yeah. and so on. But what makes me crazy, my point of sensitivity, is the following. Okay, I'm addressing now you as a black person. Don't you feel a little bit patronized, but maybe even more for blacks, this holds for so-called Native Americans? Mm -hmm. I say so-called because of sure. my love for them. Sure. You know, all this bullshit of we Western white people have imperialist attitude towards nature, we just uh, exploit nature and so on, but Native Americans, they have an organic link with nature. Before they mine a mountain, they ask the spirit of the mountain for uh, permission and so on and so on. All my Native American friends, they hate this. They see in this false respect a terrible patronizing attitude. Mm -hmm. One of them told me a wonderful thing, you should like it. He told me, I hate even this term Native Americans because it's associated with nature culture. Mm -hmm. Like, we are Native Americans, you are what cultural Americans? And mm -hmm. then he told me a wonderful thing. He told me, I prefer to be called Indian because at least in this case, my name is a monument to white men's stupidity who didn't <laughs> know where they arrived. No? Another <laughs> thing, with, I wonder now, I propose you as a, I provoke you as a black guy. Mm -hmm. My hero, sincerely, I'm not bluffing, yeah. is Malcolm X. Mm. You know why? Tell me why. Because of this Malcolm X, he had an ingenious insight, which was at the top of contemporary philosophy. Mm -hmm. Namely, he wasn't playing the Hollywood game Roots. You remember that mm -hmm. stupid TV series? As if the greatest honor for you black desire is to find some tribe there in Africa. Oh, I'm from there. No. Of course, Malcolm X meant by the brutality of white men being enslaved, we were deprived of our roots and so on. But he wrote about it. He mm -hmm. says, but this X, paradoxically, opens up a new freedom for us. All that white people want to be, not primitive tribal, but universal, creating their own space. We, black people, have a unique chance to not to become, not to return to our particularity, no, to be more universal emancipatory than white people themselves. You see, this is the important thing for me. What say you then about the political correctness of this country feeling like it is our duty to export democracy around the world? Is there a political correctness in that? Uh, of course, and mm -hmm. as an old Marxist, I've written dozens of texts criticizing this. Mm -hmm. But I think this is just one part of the story. Uh, that is to say, the fear of how, under the pretense of exporting mm -hmm. some universal values, mm -hmm. we are really imposing our mm -hmm. way of life, our mm -hmm. specific values. Mm -hmm. I buy this argument. But wouldn't you agree that often the opposite also holds, that there is a false respect for others' specific way of life, mm -hmm. where under the pretext of uh, we shouldn't impose our way of life, you tolerate, even condone, the most brutal oppression. Mm -hmm. An example, Saudi Arabia, which is for me real mm -hmm. empire of evil, point of shame. Why? Are you aware what is happening now with these refugees? Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia is directly responsible for the war in Syria. It is supporting one side, some Islamist parties and so on. You know how many refugees Saudi Arabia accepted? None. Mm -hmm. None. So what I'm saying is that I think we must show understanding for their specific way of life. Mm -hmm. No, I believe in solidarity of battle. Arabs have their own battles, they have their own secularists, they have movements, for example, against honor killings and so on and so on. I don't believe in universality of our human rights. Mm -hmm. I believe in universality of struggle. You have your fight, we have our fight, let's turn it into the same fight. I have to stop this conversation right now because I'm out of time. Um, this isn't fair, but I'm going to do it anyway because this is the best I can do. Tomorrow night on this program, I cannot continue this conversation because of commitments already scheduled, but on Monday night, 
All right, we're going to continue part two of this conversation because I got, we, I want to talk about four or five things tonight. We only got to one, political correctness. So we'll continue on Monday night. Up next, a bonus performance from singer-songwriter Jewel. If you missed the conversation, you think this is good, it's a good conversation. Last night, Jewel was amazing. If you missed her last night, please go online and check out the conversation with Jewel last night. Tonight, though, a second song from this new record. Uh, it's called Picking Up the Pieces. She also has a memoir out. Tonight, a song from that project called Mercy. Please enjoy Jewel coming up now. We'll see you tomorrow night on this program. As always, thanks for watching and keep the faith.